Hallelujah. Shall we bow down our heads for a word of prayer? Gracious God, we are so grateful this morning for the opportunity given us to worship as a community coming from various parts of the world. Pray that speak to us and give us a heart to listen to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to say thank you to those in charge of worship in the seminary for the opportunity given to the international community to worship. And uh, I also want to say I'm grateful to the president and professors, staff, and all students for being here this morning uh, to listen to us uh, as international community. We say God bless you. I speak on the theme this morning, Chosen for a Purpose. The text before us, chosen from Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, give an account of Jesus, chosen to all of his followers. The choice, as Mark told us, was not based on any qualification. At least, the impression of special qualification was not indicated in the text. But the choice was based on Jesus' own will. And we know from some other passages of scripture that some of these 12 were fishers from Mark 1, verses 14 to 20. Some were tax collectors, Mark chapter 2, verses 13 to 14. And they were unschooled people, Acts chapter 4, verse 13. The 12, I said, were specially chosen because they were not the only people that Jesus called. Mark 3, verse 13 gave me the idea, so let's read it. It says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called those he wanted, and they came to him. The phrase, those he wanted, surely did not refer to only the 12, but other people as well. Again, verse 14 gave weight to my assertion that the people Jesus called in verse 13 were not only 12, but more than that number. So verse 14 says, and he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out. He appointed 12. That means there were others. So from verse 14 to 15, it is clear in my estimation that the purpose uh, for which Jesus chose the 12 were one, that they might be with him, which is in verse 14, and also two, that he might send them out to preach, verse 14 again, and verse 15, that they might have authority to drive out demons. The task of being with Jesus, for me, hold the other two purposes together. I think of being with Jesus as an apprenticeship in its total form. Uh, an apprentice stays with the master, lives with the master from the beginning to the end of his or her training. The learner stays for the purpose uh, of having a change in behavior and would have to learn the use of language of the profession before acquiring skills. The idea is not only for the apprentice to learn skills of the master, but also to learn the character of the master, which is assumed to be a professional behavior. Uh, the difference between apprenticeship and being with Jesus is that apprenticeship has a termination point, but being with Jesus is supposed to be forever. The 12 were to be with Jesus so that they can observe, they can learn and practice what Jesus Christ, the master, does. It is in being with Jesus that the disciples can be sent to preach their character will mirror their message. After being with Jesus, their character and everything they did resembled that of Jesus Christ. So we read in Acts 4 verse 13, 
when they saw the car courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Their character showed it. The message of the two uh, let people know that they were ordinary. They've never been to school. They had no theological training. But the attitude with which they spoke showed clearly that they had been with Jesus. So John, the disciple later wrote in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaimed concerning the word of life. They were not just listening to instructions, but they were seeing and replicating behavior which became real to them. The second one, they were called to preach a message that is not their own. They are to preach a message of the kingdom of God. So Matthew wrote for us, Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, as you go, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Paul wrote of the message he is called to preach. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. The message was not supposed to be that of a human philosophy or the ability to speak fluently, but it is simply God's message. And the third purpose of Christ choosing 12 was for them to have authority over demons. In fact, in my context, demons are real and um, activities are being done to cast out demons. But for me, demons are not necessarily spirit beings, but also it includes all that oppresses the creation of God. This can be in many forms, such as selfishness, oppression of the poor and needy, immorality, corruption, discrimination, destruction of the environment, and others that we can imagine. What I mean to say today is that we have been called by Jesus, not because we are more qualified than other believers. It is simply Jesus choosing us. It, it has nothing to do with our family background. I know that some of us took examination for us to be here, but I want to say the examination is not necessarily our qualification to be in this seminary. Paul reminded us of our calling in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many were influential, not many were of noble birth. We might not all become pastors. Some of us might not even work in a Christian organization. But wherever we would be working, let us remind and remember that we have been chosen by Jesus Christ to be with him. Just as those who have been with Jesus have acquired unique and observable characters, we have to work towards acquiring those characters from Jesus as well. Brothers and sisters, being with Jesus cannot be like in the days of the world, since the two contexts are different. Uh, but I believe that we can also be with Jesus in our time. For instance, being in the seminary and having training is like being with Jesus. So we need to spend our time searching, studying, uh, reading and the Bible and other relevant documents or books. Uh, also, we need to have time to pray as well. Again, we have people who have gone ahead of us in this calling. So we have our professors who are as well pastors. We can learn from them how to tread the path of our call. Doing this means we are being with Jesus. We have been called to be sent out with a message, the message of freeing the whole creation 
of God. It is not for us to choose where to go, where to be, and what to say, but it is for us to go where Jesus wants us to go and preach what Jesus wants us to preach at that time and place. We are called to drive out demons of society, demons of selfishness, demons of oppression, demons of immorality, demons of corruption, demons of discrimination, demons of God's beautiful creation, and every other thing that brings chaos into the creation of God, beloved in the Lord. We are called to reduce the burden of creation in words and in our actions, not to increase creation's challenge with our words and actions. And dearly, the call to ministry in whatever area and form can be demanding to the extent that we sometimes forget the purpose for which we were chosen. I humbly wish to remind all of us whether we are about leaving the seminary or continuing our studies in the seminary that we have been chosen among the Lord. Remember, we were not the only people in our churches. We were not the only people in our families. And for the international community, we were not the only people in our countries. God and Jesus Christ purposely chose us so that we can be with him. So let us be with Jesus. Being with Jesus at this time means that we have to learn to do ministry with Jesus. We cannot do ministry without Jesus. Just as Jesus called us to partner with him in ministry, let us remember that there are others in the church, there are others in the community which equally qualify to be in ministry, just like us. So let us involve them in ministry. Uh, ministry is not a one man's activity. It's a collective activity. So wherever we find ourselves, whether at the workplace, in the church, and other works, let us endeavor to involve others in our various ministries. The second one that I want us to remember is that we've been chosen to preach. And let us be ready to go with the message that we have been given, not our own message. Beloved, preaching is not only in words, but it's supposed to go with our character. Remember that these disciples went out, they preached, and their character showed that they had been with Jesus. Let us de deliver our message with the character of Christ. The last one is to drive out demons. Let us remember to drive out demons. There are enough demons troubling God's creation. We hear them on the news every day. We should work towards driving them out. If we cannot drive out demons, I want to remind us that we should not add to the demons that are already in society. Let's work hard so that we get the burdens of society reduced. May the Spirit of God be with us so that we can all fulfill the purpose of our calling now and forever. God bless you and God bless Beauty's family. Amen. Shall we pray? We thank you, Jesus, for choosing us to be with you. We know that like the disciples, we're not qualified, but you chose us anyway. In this moment that we are with you, let our lives be transformed so that when we go into society to preach the kingdom of God, our attitude, our behavior, everything that we do, will let everyone know that we had been with you even if our message is not good enough. We pray also that you give us the courage, the strength 
to face the evils of society so that we can bring joy, glory, and grace from above to your creation now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.